Hey guys, Jason here, and today I want to show you something that God showed me in Hosea, and I've never seen it before, and it's kind of an obscure passage, and yet it's powerful, and it's about what God has sowed into the earth and the harvest of this generation, and so I just want to share that with you. And um, so if you have your Bibles, you can join me at Hosea 2, Hosea chapter 2. I just want to read this passage and then I'm going to break it down and hopefully it's as life-changing for you as it was for me. And it's Hosea 2 and we're going to look at verse 19. And it says, I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice and loving kindness and compassion. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. And so the context of this whole chapter is really the bride of Christ. And God is talking about his everlasting love for us and that it doesn't change. And so really the whole couple paragraphs before this, Jesus is talking about his bride. And then it goes into this. So keep in mind this with the context of the church being the bride and what God's called us to be. It says it will come about in that day. This is verse 21. It will come about in that day that I will respond, declares the Lord. I, res I will respond to the heavens and they will respond to the earth and the earth will respond to the grain, to the new wine and to the oil and they will respond to Jezreel. Um, the word there at the very end, they will respond to Jezreel. Jezreel in the Hebrew means God sows. That's what that word means and what that name means there. Um, and you might think, well, what, <laughs> what does that mean? It's actually a little easier if you go back. So Jezreel, God sows. And because God sows grain, oil, and wine, the earth responds, causing the heavens to respond. Okay, all this in context of the bride of Christ. So let's break that down a little bit. What did God ever sow? If it says God sows, it's just real. God sows, you know, the oil, the wine, and the bread. Well, what is that? When did God sow something? Well, in the New Testament, we know that the sower sows the word. Right, that God sows the word. So he sowed his word into the earth. And on top of that, Jesus is the living word, right? So he was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So Jesus is the living word. And God sowed that into the ground, right? A seed does not bear fruit unless it first dies of itself. So Jesus came. The seed of the woman prophesied from Genesis 3, from the very beginning, that would crush the head of the serpent. This seed comes that God sows into the land, the incorruptible seed. Jesus died, is buried, just like a seed was, three days, rises again, full of power, right? So Jesus is a seed. He is the word and the living word that was sown by God, all right? And when we look at those three elements that we saw there in Hosea, Okay, we have oil, we have wine. Okay, this is not actual wine, this is pre-workout stuff, but it's gonna work for today. And we have bread. And if you think about it, Jesus relates to all three of those things, which makes sense because Jesus, because God sowed his word. So Jesus is the bread of life, right? And he says, I have food and bread to do um, that you don't even know about, and it's to do the will of the Father. So doing the will of the Father is you know, your daily bread. And Jesus, his body was broken for you, right? Do this in remembrance of me. This is his body. He's the bread of life. So Jesus is bread. Jesus is also oil. The Jesus Christ, Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ means anointed one, the Messiah, the anointed one and his anointing. One of the first messages that Jesus preached is, hey, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. So Jesus was full of anointing. He was full of the power of God. He was holy. He was separated. He was sanctified. And he came with that full power and presence of God. Okay, so he's the anointed one. And Jesus is the wine, right? His blood was spilled on our behalf. Our garments have been washed in the blood of Christ so that they could become white. Jesus said, this is, this is the blood of the new covenant that I have for you. This blood being spilled out allows us to enter into the new covenant in Jesus. By his stripes, we're healed. So he is wine, he's oil, 
he's bread. One of the first miracles Jesus ever did, well, the first one he did, was turning water into wine, which is really redeeming us. When you think about it, it's prophetic, because there's six water pots. That's the number of man. He took that water. He cleansed it with the blood of Christ, wine, and it's also parallel to the end of the age. But that's a, that's a, whole, <laughs> it's a whole different lesson. Um, but now if we look back at that passage in Hosea, so God sowed wine, he sowed oil, and he sowed bread. And because of that, the earth responds, and because of that, the heavens respond, all in the context, right, of the church. So what does this mean? Well, if I sow cucumber seeds, I'm going to get cucumbers. If I sow pepper seeds, I'm going to get, pep I'm going to get peppers. So, you know, if I sow tomato seeds, I'm going to get tomatoes. So if God sowed oil, wine, and bread then the harvest of that seed are believers full of the bread of life, full of the new covenant in Jesus' blood, and full of the anointing. If God sowed that, then the harvest is that too. There's a harvest of incorruptible seed. There's a harvest of believers that are under the new covenant, that are full of the anointing, the same anointing that Jesus had. The, the Bible says the same spirit that Jesus had lives on the inside of us, that we have an anointing from the Holy One, and we know all things. So we are anointed. We are under the blood of Jesus with a new covenant that's so much better than the old covenant that other generations before Jesus didn't have, and we're walking with the bread of life. We're doing the will of the Father, and we have the Word on the inside of us. There's a harvest on what God sowed. And ever since Jesus sowed, himself and sowed the word there's been that harvest and there's been you know people moving in the power and the anointing of God and under the new covenant you know from the beginning but there's also a consummate harvest with that a consummate anointing with that the bible says first you see the blade then you see the ear then you see the full ear there is a mature version of the harvest the god says that the latter exceeds the former and so if the apostles you know, and in the book of Acts, if they moved in all this power and demonstration, what do you think this generation has? This is the generation that God is pouring out into for this end time harvest. And we get to be part of the greatest move of God the world has ever known. Moving more in the oil, more in the anointing, more in the blood of Jesus, more in the word and in the demonstration than ever before. And we're it. And so um, the question I want you guys to think about is choose this day what you want to be. Because when Jesus comes back, he's coming back at the end time harvest and you're either, there's going to be wheat and there's going to be tares. There's not middle ground. You're one or the other. You're either serving God or you're a tare. And you might look like wheat, but you're not. And the tares get thrown into the fire, but the wheat are gathered into heaven and the angels are coming. And I want to, I want to be wheat and I don't want to be just regular wheat. I want to be on fire for God wheat because that is available. You can move in the power of God. You can move this, this covenant, these better promises that are available in Jesus are just absolutely amazing. And we get to have them. There's no excuse for our generation. You know, back in the time of David, it's not like they had, the, you know, the full word written out like we do. You know, they didn't have, you know, the new covenant. They didn't have the anointed one on the inside where before the Holy Spirit would come upon them. But now the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of us. There is no excuse for this generation. And God's coming back for a bride. Remember, that's, that's the whole point of that passage. And it says, in that day. And so the bride is being made ready. And because of that, the earth responds and the heavens respond. The earth is groaning and travailing for the manifestation of the sons of God. It is just waiting for the oil and for the wine and for the bread to manifest their sonship. Sonship for us to manifest as who we are in Christ. And when we do, the earth responds and the heavens respond. That we are moving as the sand of the seashore, the earth, and as the stars of the heaven, that we have authority in both places. Whatever we bind on earth, man, it's bound in heaven. The heavens are responding. Whatever we loose on earth, it's loosed in heaven. We have free access to the things in heaven because of what Jesus did. Free access. We have authority as the ecclesia, as the church in the earth. And um, it's just absolutely amazing to me. Um, the authority and what we have and that the heavens are moving on our behalf and that things are shaking because we're the, the sons and daughters of God are waking up and we're beginning to manifest that and it's moving things. That kingdom come, that will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. And so that's really what's available. There is a harvest, there is a mature, consummate anointing harvest of the oil and the wine and the bread, and you get to be part of it. So hope that blessed you as much as it blessed me. See you guys next time.